Hey everybody, Whitney Labrie here and welcome to Ock Poulter, where over the next four weeks, I'll be recreating the children's room from the movie Poltergeist. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome aboard. This series is part of my 15 room movie and TV themed dollhouse. If you're interested in seeing other episodes and what I've done so far, you can find those links in the description below. Now, if you're not new, welcome back. I'm super excited for this series. Today, we're gonna start with the basics of the room, the shell, the flooring, a build out and Robbie's bed, and of course his bedding, which is incredibly perfect for any little boy growing up in the 80s. Future episodes will include Carol Ann's room, and then we'll jump over to all the toys and all the fun details. And then finally, for the fourth episode, it's gonna be a good one, it's gonna be a spooky one. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future content. Oh, sounds like they're here, so we better get started. So whenever I start a new room, I like to review what the current room looks like. As you can see, this room is covered in nothing but pink. Pink wall, pink carpet, wainscoting, and ceiling. It also has very little damage. Now for some, pink may not be your thing, but I really find pink to be a really joyful color. And when I look at this room, while a few stains and issues, I just can't bring myself to tear it apart. Therefore, I'm gonna leave it alone and instead do a similar technique that I did with the Indiana Jones room, and that's to build a room box in a room box. That way, if in the future I think of any other movie I love that would be better suited for the pink room, I can just remove this poltergeist room box and put it somewhere else. I have now built this foam board shell and I have built it also a lot more shallow than the actual room that it's going into. I usually do rooms that are inspired by a movie. In this case, I'm building a replica, so it will be more important that the shell be more fitting to the size of the room that we see in the movie. The kids room is divided into two sections. We have Robbie's side of the room and Carol Ann's side of the room. Now I had to share a room for a short period of time. It felt like an eternity with my sister and it was an absolute nightmare because what? She is an absolute mess and I was a clean freak. So luckily my mom recognized that I was miserable and she finally gave me my own room. But I digress, thank God. So Robbie's side of the room will be the main focus in today's video. So what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring in order to create that real large build out that we see in the movie. And as I'm rewatching the movie several times for this recreation, I realize that this poor kid has like a ton of bed scenes. I mean, he's counting thunder, he's watching lightning. We all know the tree, we'll call it the tree situation. And of course the infamous clown scene. For the build out, I'll be using a styrofoam base. These pieces will become the headboard, and the three three drawer dressers that we see at the base of the bookcases. And then I'll be cutting down balsa wood to create both the front and side panels and the drawer fronts. I also cut some of the foam to create Robbie's bed, which uses part of the build out as his headboard. And you can see in the photos that he has several like Star Wars figures and other toys sitting on top of it. I did create a gap under the foam in case I wanna add any spooky, creepy things under there, but we shall see about that. For the top and all the shelving, I'll be using basswood. You can see that I'm leaving an opening in this one area and that's actually where there's like a little desk and we'll be adding a chair later. For the shelving, I kind of made a guess to the height of the shelves. Based on the fact that this is an 80s built house and most of the 80s built houses had about nine foot ceilings in the extra bedrooms. So I'm just, like I said, guessing to the height. I also have to say that this build out is pretty cool and I feel like this would be a really great build out in other rooms, even if I wasn't doing like a poltergeist replica. Now I need to paint the build out white, but before I do that, I wanna mark the area where the window will be and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Now I'm gonna tell you right now that this was an absolute mistake and I'll tell you why in a second. Now for some reason I thought the kids room had carpeting because most houses built at this time did have carpeting upstairs just to cut back on the amount of creaking that you could hear downstairs. So I bought this really nice piece of cream felt. 
But upon watching the movie yet again, when Robbie goes to look under the bed, guess what? Yes, wood floors. And not only that, but they're all cut at a 45 degree angle. So geez, boo hiss, more work for me. But now, because I had pre-cut that window like a ding dong, I also have to cut the wood around the build out so the build out won't be higher than the window, creating other issues down the road. So anyway, lesson learned, always add your flooring first. But now that the floor is in and the built out is painted white, I found these brass round knobs and I'll just use a little tacky hole to keep them in place while I paint them with my tester's red paint. While the little red drawer pulls were drying, I did take this wall tack here and started to create big enough holes for the knobs to be glued in place. It was a pretty easy process because the drawer fronts and of course the panels are all balsa wood, so it was really easy to create a hole just using a wall tack. Another thing I noticed is that the top drawer in the build out is actually two drawers. So I just marked it with a pencil and then I made a gap with an X-Acto knife. Problem solved, people. Now I'll install the build out and glue it in place and add the baseboards also. Let me grab my foam bed here and then let's talk a little bit about the bedding. In the movie, Robbie actually has a vintage Star Wars comforter set with matching striped sheets. I found this white fabric here that I just thought was just too cute to pass up. I really couldn't find the stripe that I was looking for, but this seemed to be the right scale. And again, just it was darling. And then what I'm going to do is use my blue fabric here. This is a vintage Star Wars pattern. This is a leftover material from another uh, miniature bed that I made several years ago. And I think the common together will work. It will look very similar to what we're seeing in the movie. Now let me get those wrinkles out and I'll begin. First I'll wrap the base of the bed like a little Christmas present and I am using my hot glue to do that and hold everything in place. Once that's done, I'll take more of that same white fabric, but then I'll place my blue fabric on top and also begin to glue it down. The difficult part in this is to make it look like a boy was just sleeping in the bed and then carelessly got up and walked away. So I wanna really make sure that I'm bunching up the fabric in a lot of places, and I really wanna have it kind of dragging on the floor as well, so it just really looks real. And when I feel good about the look, I'm gonna spray it with a lot of my fabric stiffener on the bed to just kind of help keep everything in place. You can also use this stiffener before you start the scrunching. Next for the pillow, I'm actually going to sew a little pillow and I know what many of you are thinking. You're probably shocked that I even own a needle and thread, but I do and I do wanna do a nice heavier realistic pillow. So I'm actually gonna bite the bullet and sew one. I'm also gonna fill this up with some multi-grain rice because I feel it's incredibly important for all pillows to have plenty of fiber. And once the pillow is complete, I can just place it on the bed. I won't glue it because the weight of the rice will keep it in place. I will, however, glue the bed to the headboard. Well, I say let's go ahead and place the room box in the dollhouse and see what it looks like so far. Now, I did place a black piece of construction paper in the window for now just to hide that pink wallpaper in the room, but there's gonna be plenty more action later in that area. But I do think that this is a good stopping point for now. While the room seems to be really coming together, we have so much that we still haven't done. Next week, we'll be working on Carol Ann's side of the room. We're gonna do her bed and bedding. We'll also be doing a building a little bitty toy box. We'll be working on her nightstands and lamps and a few other things. So we still have a lot to do there. But don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on not only the next steps, but the final completion of the room. Oh, and I should say, I do know that a few of you are watching do have some serious clown phobias, but I want you to know that the clown will not show up till the very last episode, but I am hoping that you'll be able to hang in as the clown will only be a small, tiny clown, and it's not likely to be able to pull you under the bed just due to its incredibly small size.
So let me know what you think of the room so far in the comments below. And if you feel so inclined, please share this episode to your other social media outlets and make sure all of your other spooky loving friends watch it too. So thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Remember in this crazy life, it is the little things that matter. And I'll see you next time.